Hey, I'm James from Soaking Dad Barbecue, and today you are joining me for my second ever cook on the Weber Summit E6 Kamado. And now I'm gonna be sharing a couple insights and learnings from my second cook versus a, a normal video where we're gonna have a brisket to taste test at the end of the day, because I cooked the brisket yesterday. This is already a cook in the books. I was doing some short form content for Wild Fork Canada as part of a campaign that they're working on. So I've already done and cooked the brisket, but I learned a couple of key things that just don't fit short form content that I wanted to share with you as it informs a couple of things we're going to need to work on, especially if the Weber Summit wants to have a chance of competing head to head later on this summer versus one of my Kamado Joes. So let me share a couple of the key insights and learnings, uh, as well as the results of the brisket cook on the Weber Summit Kamado. So I'll get you back to today's video in just a moment, I promise. But first, I wanna thank Original Grain for sponsoring today's video. They really help make things like this happen. Speaking of making things happen, they have an amazing deal if you're looking for a last minute Father's Day gift. In addition to my normal save 10% off code, you can stack that with an additional 20% that is on right now for a Father's Day sale, bring your total discount up to 30% off. Those prices are so good, you may be inclined to do what I've done and get two watches for your own that you can mix and match. The two that I've picked up, one that I'm sporting <laughs> with a shirt like this, how could you not go with a Hawaiian reclaimed Hoa wood? So that's what I'm wearing today. But one of my other favorites is made from reclaimed mesquite wood. And this is the Grillmaster series watch, which I like because it comes with an integrated timer. I can do something really short. If I had a precise timer under a minute, there's 60 seconds, or there is common things like chicken, steak, that could take us up to 20 minutes, all in an analog, beautifully handcrafted wood watch face. I've had my two original grain watches since 2022 and I absolutely love them. But somehow if you pick one and you don't absolutely love it and want to uh, maybe try a different model, original grain will buy that watch back from you. So there's really low risk to helping make sure you find dad the perfect gift for this Father's Day. So a couple other reasons that I am a big fan of the team at Original Grain in no particular order. First, I love supporting small business and the team at Original Grain, they've been around for a while, about a decade now, but they are a family and veteran owned business out of the Pacific Northwest and they do an exceptional job. Second is environmental sustainability. I'm a huge fan of companies doing their part and I'm blown away by the creativity and intentionality that the team at Original Grain demonstrate. If you don't happen to resonate the same that I do with uh, my reclaimed hoa wood from Hawaii, there is plenty of other cool materials being used. Things like ocean harvested plastics to tequila or beer barrels, or even military ammo crates. <laughs> the list is almost too much to cover in one video. You're definitely gonna wanna go check out the website. Speaking of the website and making sure you take advantage of that sale it's on, go to originalgrain.com and use code SMOKING to save 10%, which can be stacked with the save 20% Father's Day sale that's on right now, bringing your total savings to 30%. Thanks again for Original Grain for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the action. So crash course on the brisket, the cook, as well as the taste test results, and then I'll get into some of the immediately obvious things that we need to work on. The brisket that Wild Fork Canada sent me for their short form content Content was a really nice about 14 pound packer brisket. I'll save that for the reel, but this was a really nice quality brisket. I did uh, what I would normally do, which is just trim this up uh, to a nice even thickness and a quarter inch on the fat cap. And I saved all of my trimmings in order to make some smoked tallow. I've got a couple jars now in the fridge. So we've got lots of cool things that we're gonna be able to do with that moving forward. In terms of the cook, this is a little bit different than the earlier versions of the Weber Summit Kamado that I've used. The first version had a folding heat deflector plate. So that meant throughout our cook, if I wanted to add some extra smoking wood, I could use the fold up grate, which this has, as well as the fold up heat deflector and supplement that wood smoke uh, throughout the cook. Because this doesn't have that, I decided to try what I would normally do in my Kamado Joe and add a bit of smoking wood into the ash drawer in the hopes that the ash pan here, like my ash drawer, that the embers and coals falling down will cause that to combust and add a little bit of supplemental smoke. The rest of the setup for the Weber Summit Kamado was pretty straightforward. I put another piece of smoking wood right in the bottom, 
covered that up with Fogo, used my Grow Blazer Grow Gun and started a nice hot fire down in the center. Installed the one piece heat deflector plate and I went with a water pan. Now the Weber Summit doesn't have as much space to work with as either of my Kamado Joe Big Joe Series 1 or Big Joe Series 3, where lately I've been experimenting with hiding that water pan below the slow roller. That's giving me the benefit of a water pan, which I've tested side by side without a water pan. And despite this being one of the oldest rumors in a Kamado style grill is you don't need a water pan, try it side by side. You might be surprised it's actually better. But the issue with a water pan normally is it softens our bottom bark. And so to get around that, I've been hiding a water pan on my heat deflector plates, putting another set of deflector plates or a slow roller above them, uh, and then using that to supercharge the mist throughout the dome. And that has been working really well. I don't have the real estate in the stock Weber uh, Summit Kamado setup to be able to get away with this. So I just put my smokeware drip pan directly on the heat deflector plate that's gonna get nice and hot, cause that water to boil steam. Uh, and I'll just have to keep an eye on the bottom of the brisket so I'm not getting that steaming effect. And maybe uh, just let that pan, once it dries out, I won't refill it. So that way uh, we can still develop some of the bark, but I get the benefit of the extra humidity, particularly in the early stage where we need those water molecules to help the smoke adhere to our meat. That's why the moisture is so critical when we are smoking something like a brisket or ribs early on. So that was the uh, setup. I added our brisket and continued to spray it just like normal using a mixture of apple cider vinegar and water. So it was about 50% uh, vinegar, 50% water and sprayed that every hour. Sticking with the theme as of late, I went for the long rest hold. Now the first one that I did on my Kamado Joe Big Joe Series 3 where I let it sit for 11 hours just by controlling our vents, it was super moist, super juicy, but I overcooked it. And so I'm trying to figure out there's time and temperature. These are the two variables that we have. Uh, and so since I can't really you know, control the temperature over a long period of time in something like the Weber Summit or Kamado Joe without the assistance of a fan, I decided to rely on the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro sitting behind me set to 160 degrees. The adjustment that I made on the brisket is I set my meter app uh, to alert me when we got close to about 175 to 180 degrees, checked it again with my chef's temp final touch to make sure that we were nice and even all the way through. And when I was seeing about 180 degrees all around, I removed the brisket. This is about 10 degrees cooler than my first experiment on the Kamado Joe Big Joe Series 1 wrapped that in butcher paper and put it in the Camp Chef Woodwind set to 160 degrees and held that for 15 hours overnight. The next day when we removed this, I could already tell an improvement in this lower temperature. So the first time was 190, second time around here was 180 degrees. As when I was slicing it, I was able to still get a bit of that flap test with a flat piece out of the brisket and not have it just absolutely crumble and fall apart. I get asked this all the time. If your brisket is tough in the flat, undercooked. If when you pick it up and it just crumbles and all falls apart, this is overcooked. And so my first one was a little bit on the crumbly overcooked side and I got much closer this time around because there was enough uh, texture and consistency to actually be able to have it hold up under its own weight. But I still want to get a little bit more uh, towards the firmness that I like where I get a pencil size slice. Number two pencil is the ideal size slice and have that do the flop test, hold up under its own weight and give it a nice tug. So in terms of uh, being able to manage a brisket cook, the water pan worked really well in helping inject some smoke. The smoke quality and quantity uh, was there, albeit mild. And I think it was just suffering from not being able to add wood. If I show you a clip here from the ash pan where I added a piece of smoking wood, there was just not enough hot embers or not enough heat insulation to keep that coal bed alive. Since once it falls, uh, those ashes would extinguish and not enough to cause that piece of wood to combust. So we're gonna have to work a little bit on getting that wood to combust and be able to add supplemental smoke. The bottom bark though was uh, not mushy because I let that water pan run out and then let that bottom bark start to firm up. And again, based on the proximity of the fire, we are much closer to the fire in the summit than on the series three Big Joe, which is about four inches taller than the series one. And just looking at the two, uh, there is even more distance uh, in the series one versus the summit. So that crisped up nicely. And the paper wrap and the long hot hold, as I mentioned, did its magic, you know, overnight. But coming back to the Weber Summit, now that I've got this cook under the belt, what are some of the things that I want to work on? First is access to the fire and smoking wood. It was nice, clean smoke, 
incredibly mild and if anything not enough it was approaching almost what i got off of my camp chef woodwind pro when i did a brisket on there where i'm using pellets for heat and fuel and then adding some wood for flavor uh, this had a slight advantage because charcoal is wood and i had one piece of smoking wood but it's you know one percent to five percent uh, better smoke it was on the incredible light end of smoke so getting access to our fire is another key component and in comments i saw many of you have been testing something like even the kamado joe divide and conquer rack so i'm going to do an experiment in a future video with the divide and conquer rack i've also ordered immediately after that cook finished the low profile uh, sns basket for the weber summit kamado and so i just have to wait for that to arrive uh, but that's another product that i want to put through its paces because that'll again give me a basket with access to the fire and i can add some smoking wood uh, and then have an indirect zone that we're cooking on the other side Speaking of the Komodo Joe Divide and Conquer rack and that actually fitting in the Summit Komodo, I want to test a couple other things. Since I have them, the Big Joe Dojo as well as the Joe Tisserie are both 24 inches. Some mixed reports. Some people have said they fit. Some people have said they don't fit. I'm just going to test them. Uh, that'll be a quick and easy one to validate which accessories fit. So that's a quick update, sort of a, a bit of a recap of a previous cook. Hope you don't mind the slightly different format, but it was interesting already seeing a couple of these differences play out and will inform sort of where the future test videos go, which will all be uh, landscape mode, don't worry. That's it for today though. I'm James from Soka Dad Barbecue signing off. Make sure you've got the notification bell turned on so you're alerted when those future videos and experiments come out. But that's it for today. I'm James from Soka Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. Thank you.